Hello. In the previous video, we found the spectrum for a multiplication of sinusoids. And that's useful to understand the spectrum of amplitude modulated signals that we use in AM radio. So let's do an activity to go over the concept of amplitude modulation and the spectrum of amplitude modulated signals. So here we have an information signal, VT. Let's write it. Vt equals to 5 plus cosine 2 pi 20 hertz t of 20 hertz. So this is this low information signal that we want to transmit and uh, using a carrier of a higher frequency. Now, this is a very low frequency, still 200 hertz, so it will not work in AM radio, but the principles are the same. If you have a slow varying sinusoid and you multiply it times a higher frequency sinusoids, what happens to the spectrum? So in this case, the carrier is a one times cosine of 2 pi 200 t. Or you can see, think of this as in the kilohertz range. So in amplitude modulation, what do we do? We multiply one, one time the other, and we have 5 plus cosine of 2 pi 20 t multiplied times the carrier, cosine of 2 pi 200 t. In general, in amplitude modulation, what you have is your information signal, V of t, say, for instance, audio or a speech, something up to tw our speech or audio, we can hear up to 20 kilohertz. So it's going to be a band-limited version of that. Now, you will require a very large antenna to transmit something at those low frequencies, and so the idea is to shift the spectrum to a higher frequency that then you can radiate. And how do you do that? Time, multiplying it times your carrier, 2 pi fc. This is the carrier frequency. So when you tune your AM radio to a particular frequency, that's uh, the carrier frequency in order to be able to radiate it and um, transmit it as a radio signal. Now, what is the spectrum of something like that, right? Or something like this. And this, by the way, it is a double sideband, large carrier type of amplitude modulation. We saw in the previous problem that when we did this multiplication of these two sinusoids, we got some side lobes. Our frequency here, which was 2.5 hertz, we got a spectral components at that plus the frequency of the information signal. So we have 2.5 and a 0 0.5. So we got a 3 hertz and a 2 hertz. And we call that, since we got a double sideband, double sideband, in this case, Suppress carrier because you do not see the carrier here. Amplitude modulation. In this case, we're going to see the carrier simply because we have this DC component. Now it is double sideband, large carrier makes the demodulation easier because it's just an envelope detector, as we are going to see, but it is less power efficient than in the case of supercarrier. So Let's actually work this out. We are asked to write the expression. We already did that. This is number A. And B, sketch the signal in the time domain and C, find the spectrum. Okay, so in the time domain, B, we could say, well, we have a signal here that this is low changing. This is T. And this is just a sketch of x of t, okay, 20 hertz, 
And then we are multiplying that times a signal that is faster, 200 hertz. This is a very rough sketch. You, you will need to make sure that you have 200 cycles in one second and in the other one, uh, um, 20 cycles in one second. When you multiply this together, what you get is an amplitude modulated signal. with a DC component, in this case it's five, and that's the large carrier where you're going to see it. And so you get something like this. That's the envelope. And you call it amplitude modulation because we are modulating, we are changing the amplitude in proportion to the, your information signal by the way, this is not X of T, but V of T. V of T, and this is the carrier. And so this here is our X of T, what we transmit. So the idea here is that you have a slow changing signal, or in speech, or any other signal with lower frequency components, that you cannot radiate, and you have one that actually can travel, you can radiate. If this one you could send through it doesn't the antenna, this one you couldn't. You multiply once one times the other, and now what you're doing is that in this carrier that can travel, that can be radiated, and you can have radio frequency, you need to embed the information by changing something of the carrier. One way, something that you can change is the amplitude, as you can see here. And so therefore, amplitude modulation, that's just means changing. And so in this case, what you have is that you have your information signal, X of T, that cannot be radiated. You have a multiplier. You multiply times a carrier, cosine of 2 pi FC T, that's the carrier frequency, we are going to turn into a radio, and now you get something that looks like what we are seeing there, and if this is your antenna, you can radiate it. And so you can travel, eventually picketing another antenna, and you need to then be able to demodulate it. One of the reasons why, if you have here a DC component, sufficiently large, means that you will be able to demodulate it with a very simple demodulator. You just have to do peak detection. So you can just do something like this. So even something as simple as a diode and a capacitor there will enable you to pick the envelope where is where the information that you wanted to transmit. So that's the fundamental idea of AM modulation. You have a slow slower signal, a signal that is band limited to frequencies that cannot be radiated, or will take a huge antenna to be able to do it. And you have a carrier that actually can be, can travel through the channel. And so we multiply once the, the information signal times the carrier in order to change a property of the channel, in this case, the amplitude, so that we can transmit the signal, okay? So, with that, let's go over number C. So, we want to find the spectrum of this signal. I'm going to multiply it out. So, we have 5 times the carrier, X of T, the transmitted signal, 5 cosine of 2 pi 200 T. And this is why we call it large carrier. The, large, the carrier is going to appear in the spectrum, plus cosine of 2 pi 20 t times cosine of 2 pi 200 t. And this is the modulated signal. Now, we already found what was the spectrum when you multiply two sinusoids. Effectively, let's actually write a general equation for it. If we have a signal, f of t, which is the product of two sinusoids, cosine of 2 pi 
FI, I'm going to call that the information signal. Well, that frequency is lower than the carrier, much lower, times cosine of 2 pi FC, this is the carrier. This is equivalent to 1 half cosine of 2 pi FI plus FC. So you have a shift in frequency plus 1 half cosine 2 pi Fi minus Fc T. Pardon me, Fc minus F Si. Fi. And so what is the spectrum? In this case, let's plot it. This is frequency in hertz. And so what we're going to see, to see is that we have a component of the carrier. We see the carrier at 200 plus 200 hertz. We see a component there, right, with the amplitude of 5, and at minus 200. And then next to the carrier, we have the side lobes that are characteristic of amplitude modulation, at the carrier plus the frequency of the information uh, signal, what you see here, and minus, when you pass these two exponentials. And so we're going to see two, 200 plus 20, 220, 220, and minus 220, and here the same thing, minus 180. Sorry, what am I doing here? 180. 180. So 200, mi 200 minus 20, 180. 200 plus 20, 220. So minus 180. And minus 220. It should be much larger because these other ones are going to be, when you put them in complex exponentials, if we have a one-half cosine, is divided up by two, because cosine of, j, uh, of, cosine of theta t is one-half e to the minus j theta, so this will be one-half times one-half, one-fourth. So this is not to scale, one-fourth, one-fourth, one-fourth. So what you see here, these are the side lobes, side lobes, that you see around the carrier. So you have the carrier here. This component they see gets shifted to the frequency of the carrier. And then you have the side lobes. So carrier plus the frequency of the information signal and minus the frequency of the information signal. So effectively, this is what we have. If you have a signal with a spectrum like this, it gets shifted and you multiply that signal times a carrier with a frequency FC, it, the spectrum gets shifted to that frequency. Okay? And so you went from baseband, a signal that could not be transmitted, to another frequency that is appropriate for transmission in the particular channel. So you're going to radiate it through, through air, like in AM modulation. This is what you do. You do this multiplication here, and now you can radiate it. And if you put a sufficiently large DC component so that you can, can reconstruct the information signal by just looking at the envelope, then all you need to have here is a simple envelope detector. These are very simplified and schematic, and so the recipe is very easy, easy to compute. Now, if you don't put anything here, then you have the situation that we have here. Notice you do not have the, the carrier, but you still see the side lobes where the carrier was supposed to be. So in the previous problem, notice that we have a 2.5 hertz here, and this will be the place where the carrier will be. 
and then you have 2.5 plus 0 0.5, so 3, 2.5 minus 0 0.5, 2. This is the characteristic spectrum of all amplitude modulated signals. And you will go more in detail in, an a, in a communications course on, you know, how do you design these transmitters? How do you design the, the receivers? Um, at this point, all we are interested, this is an, an application, to understand the spectrum of sinusoids when you multiply them, and that comes up, for instance, in amplitude modulation. Thank you.